Hello, welcome to this lesson in engineering mechanics. Now this will be a fun problem because we'll use everything that we've learned and we'll solve a practical problem. Here we have some sort of hook. Think of it as some kind of a hook sitting on a wall. That's why I've labeled it wall. We have a wall here in the Z, Y plane. Attached to it is a hook and I have some ropes attached to that and I'm pulling on one rope with 600 newtons oriented this way and I'm pulling on the other rope attached to the same point with 500 newtons. So I've got this hook, I'm pulling in two different directions with different amounts of force. One of these ropes is uh, pointed in the direction of the origin, which is B. The other rope is pointed in the direction of some point I've labeled C. And because of the dimensions everywhere, you basically know where A, B, and C are. The origin point is point A and B and C are, are also in three-dimensional space as well. And what we're trying to do is we want to find, figure out what the resultant force is acting on this hook. Um, so we want to figure out what is the uh, total force acting, which will be the vector sum of the two forces that you see drawn. Uh, and furthermore, it says here that we want to uh, find the resultant at A and we want to show the magnitude and the coordinate angles of the resultant vector. So we want to know what is the magnitude of the force acting at A and we want to know uh, how it's oriented in three-dimensional space. What are the uh, angles to the x-axis, the angle to the y-axis, the angle to the z-axis after we found the resultant? So with every problem in engineering, you really have to have kind of a game plan. Even if you cannot see the finish line fully, you have to have at least a game plan to kind of inch your way there. First, we know that we have two vectors. Okay, so we know that because they both start at A, and they end at different places that we should be able to figure out what the force vector is along both or along each of these lines separately. We should get a Cartesian vector as a result of each of those just like we did in the last problem. Once we have the vectors in Cartesian form it's very simple to add them. We just add the components together that'll give us the resultant. And then even though we can't see all of the details to the end we know once we have a resultant vector we can find its magnitude and we can find the direction angles associated with it. We've done all that stuff before. So we're taking everything we've done in the past and we're kind of putting one additional layer on it which is that this guy's not uh, starting at the origin it starts up here at some point A and it's going someplace else. So let's first work on uh, figuring out how to define these vectors and figure out what those force vectors would be. It's very helpful when you have problems like this to label all of your points so you don't have to guess. Uh, point A is up here. It's in the plane of this wall here. So the X component, which is here, is 0. The Y component, which is over here, is 2. And the Z component, which is up and down, is 4. So we have 0, 2, 4 for A. Point B is labeled here at the origin. So by definition, um, that 0, 0, 0. And then point C, uh, the X component is this, which is